Hi, I'm Heidi Greco, and I'd like to talk about writing. I have to pretend that I'm being asked questions, so I'm going to pretend that one of your questions is, do you write every day? My answer is yes, I write every day. I write emails, I write texts, I write grocery lists, and when I'm lucky, I write an article or a poem or a story. I'm sure that you do the same kind of writing every day. Lots of emails, lots of texts, posts on Instagram, who knows what all. But the only difference is that my work has been published in books. And the book I'd like to talk about today is called Flight Paths, The Lost Journals of Amelia Earhart. It's a made-up story told as if it's written by somebody else, somebody who was once very famous, Amelia Earhart. She was a pilot, a woman pilot, at a time when there weren't very many women who did such bold things as fly airplanes. And she embarked on a trip that would take her around the world at the equator. She was accompanied by her navigator. The year was 1937, so a long time ago. And nobody really knows what became of her. There are many theories that her plane just crashed and she and her navigator were killed, that they were captured by a foreign entity and possibly even taken prisoner, uh, that she was brought back to the U.S. where she was from and given a false identity, all kinds of theories. And I've covered a lot of them in this little book. Much of it is written like a diary. It's dates and what looks just like prose, even though this is technically considered a book of poetry. Because in this book, I have pictured it that she and her navigator have crash landed on a tiny spit of an island, not even named. Uh, they're facing the problems of water and food. And in this one, dated July 20th, She's searching for food and finding odd things on the beach. The prickly thing was there in plenitude. Out of desperation, I poked at one, moved it onto the sand, smashed it with a rock. Inside was a gooey bit, surprisingly good. Hollow as I am these days, I ate three, hoping for no ill effects. I am so much less mobile than before, tethered to earth with this oversized ankle, my leg blown up like some lead balloon. Maybe it will rain at least, as thunder is grumbling. I have learned to welcome its throaty growl, and sometimes pretend it to be the rumble of an engine, a golden seaplane about to alight on the waves and take me home. See, I had to imagine what life might have been like on this desert island, or not even desert island, just little at all, a little strip of sand in the sea. And no doubt, as some people have probably experienced during these isolation days, she experienced boredom. And so what to write about? I actually have her looking at the sky and writing a piece called Cloud List, which is just the inspirations that she gets from looking at clouds. Okay, one name to clarify is Pidge. Pidge is her sister, whom she misses terribly. Cloud List. Wispy. Pidge's hairs entangled in my brush. Streaky. Marks from a Crayola polishing our coaster tracks. Straggly. Fish bones from a cartoon swimming across the sky. Wrinkly. 
and Rilla's sheets, fresh from the line, smelling of sunlight. Fluffy, Sandberg slow-moving little cat feet. Cottony, dainty enough for my grandmother's vanity. Lumpy, mashed potatoes, Thanksgiving with mother and father together. Grumpy, Uncle Nicey's cheeks puffed out, harumphing at the news. Cloudless, utter blue. So maybe next time you're thinking about wanting to write something, look at the sky, look at a tree, look at some birds, look at a patch of lawn, walk around your neighborhood, see what you see, write it down. Keep looking after each other and don't forget to look after yourself. Thanks.